Alright everyone, today I wanted to talk to you about a subject that's become very near and dear to my heart lately, and that's the topic of composting. I've recently gotten serious about composting, and I want to share with you all some of what I've been doing lately to uh, try to speed up and get higher quality compost. I've always been a composter, um, it's something I grew up with. We always composted kitchen scraps and uh, grass clippings, leaves, but it was something I never really thought about. You know, that was just something that we did. We'd uh, toss, you know, toss the stuff on the compost pile and forget about it. A few years, if we need some dirt, we could take some from the back of the pile, and that was pretty much all that I, uh, all I ever thought about. Since I've lived here in the park, we've uh, composted our kitchen scraps the whole time, along with some, uh, some yard waste. But we were doing a cold compost pile, so basically it's just a big pile in the back of the yard. And I didn't worry about turning it, I didn't worry about my ratios of browns to greens. So, I mean, all that's fine. One, uh, one good thing about compost is compost is going to happen. There's not really anything you can do to mess it up, stop it from happening. You can just either speed up or slow down the process, that's about it. So with the cold compost pile like we had, you know, we're still going to turn into compost. It's going to take a while. And honestly, we're kind of hoping to not be here in the park by the time that stuff turns into compost. So, I wanted to uh, speed up the process and get something that I could actually use this year on some of my garden beds. So I was looking into different composters, uh, composting designs. I was thinking about a, a trash can with some holes drilled into it and then you, that's real easy to shake up or roll around in the yard if you need to to mix everything up. Um, what we ended up going with is we found a used homemade composter on Facebook that we picked up. So that's just a, uh, a barrel that you load from the top and you can see it's got a crank on it. It's attached to a wheelchair frame. So put all the material in there and crank it every couple days. Um, it has definitely reduced in volume a fair amount since I first started it. Right now I'm kind of running an experiment on that and so I'm trying to not add the new kitchen scraps to it. I want to basically see how fast I can get that stuff to compost in there. I'm shooting for around a month, so we're about halfway through right now. When I checked it yesterday, it was, I mean, it definitely reduced in volume, but I didn't have a whole lot of hummus yet. And it seemed kind of dry, and it was all browns, or everything that I could see was browns at that point. So. I cut the grass yesterday and the leftover grass clippings, and I'll get to in a little bit what they're left over from, but the leftover grass clippings that I had, I, uh, I added those to the, uh, to the composter there. And then I added some water as well, just to keep everything nice and moist and make a, a good environment for the microorganisms and the macroorganisms in there, and mixed it up some. And from when I checked it earlier, it seems like it's reduced in volume again. And it's definitely warm in there today. So we have some hot composting going on there. And hopefully uh, we'll have some good results out of that in the next couple weeks here. Some other things I've done. Since I uh, started getting serious about composting, put together another compost bucket here. You see it's just in a cat litter container and then I drilled some holes on the top and on the sides and I also put a couple in the bottom to uh, let the organisms from the soil have access into there to kind of speed up what they're doing. So that's where the kitchen scraps are going and I'm hoping that this will last until I can take some compost, some usable compost, out of the, uh, the barrel over there. But I might run out of space before I get there, so we'll see what we have to do for that. Um, but 
this small holding bucket that's also reduced in volume a whole lot um, I've started adding uh, mostly paper products paper brown paper bags um, paper towel and toilet paper rolls uh, just ripping them up and adding those into the compost both in the kitchen and in this holding container here uh, those are browns the very carbon carbon rich so those will a they help to, to reduce the smell you can pretty much eliminate the smell by putting a nice layer of that on top and then you know that's basically what you need for compost is you need a nitrogen source and a carbon source um, so your nitrogen source is your greens your kitchen scraps your uh, your grass clippings and whatnot um, uh, manure is a green so is human hair and nails and um, cat hair as well uh, those are things I looked into yesterday um, things I'm probably going to start composting because like I said I'm getting pretty serious about this I guess I've always been uh, trying to I've always tried to reduce my waste as much as I can I don't like to let anything go to waste um, I think that's honestly uh, a trait from the Great Depression generation. My grandparents lived through the Great Depression and I think that was just passed down to me. Um, so now I'm applying that to nutrients as well. Anything that can go into the compost. Uh, pretty much anything I look at it I think, are there nutrients in this? Is this alive or was it once alive? Can this become good base material for compost? Um, so, and that's, you know, that's something I think is important when you're talking about sustainability is to start thinking about systems and in, with compost, it's you're thinking about nutrient systems, the nutrients that an organism has when it's alive and then converting that into nutrients through composting for the next generation of organisms, in this case plants. Um, let's see, what else have I got going on? So I've gotten pretty uh, stingy on my yard clippings, as my uh, grass clippings as well. What I've been doing with those is I've been mulching my garden beds with them. Um, and then yesterday what I had left over after I finished that went into the, into the composter. But the, some advantages to using it as mulch is it's a good source of nitrogen for the plants as that breaks down the grass clippings and then it also is going to help the soil to retain moisture better. So um, I found that these garden beds are pretty prone to drying out but they definitely do seem to be holding a lot more water in the soil. It always seems to be a lot more moist when I check it after having mulched it with the grass clippings as opposed to before. So I've got a couple layers of grass clippings on there. I might ease up in the next few weeks. I guess we'll see how uh, this fresh, fresh uh, layer breaks down. Um, but once again, I'm thinking about nutrient cycles. I'm thinking, okay, well, I have to cut the grass. Um, and the park does make me cut the grass, so I have to cut the grass. So what am I going to do with those nutrients? How am I going to not let this grass go to waste? So using it either as mulch, and that's basically a form of composting because it's going to break down over time, it's going to enrich in the soil over time. It's just going to take a lot longer when you mulch with it as opposed to putting it in like a, a contained area where it can hot compost. Um, oh, I knew I was forgetting something, the mushroom compost. So, this all started when I came into some bags of mushroom compost. Now, this is kind of hard to see here, but I'm not exactly sure what this is composed of, but basically mushroom compost is it's just bags of compost that you, you grow mushrooms out of. Basically it looks something like, uh, something like that. This was actually, that mushroom grew, there's a couple mushrooms in there, they all grew just out of this bag of compost after I got it. it when I got it, it was just, uh, there weren't any mushrooms growing in it. This stuff is real nice. Um, basically, you use this to grow mushrooms, and then the mushrooms use up a certain, some of the nutrients, and they're not able to use it anymore. But plants can, there's still plenty of nutrients in there that plants can use. 
So plants love this stuff. Um, it's kind of in like a compressed block here. And I like to just like break some chunks off and uh, just kind of crumple it up in my hand, break it up and uh, try to get it into the powder if I can, or at least into smaller pieces. And then I've been spreading that pretty liberally around my plants. Anything that I had planted before I obtained the mushroom compost, I just kind of mulched in a ring around the, uh, the stem of the plant. And any bed that I hadn't yet planted in, I mixed some into the top few inches of soil. And then I've also spread a layer around um, on top, either around the stem or over the area if it was a seed where I direct sowed. So I've been using that stuff. I've been liking it. Um, so far, I mean, the plants, most of them they seem to be doing pretty good. I'm worried about uh, some of them being a little bit too dry, but I've tried to step up my, uh, the amount of water that I'm giving them every time I water them. And really the composting, the mushroom compost should help with uh, water retention in the soil as well. And like I said, the, uh, the grass clippings will also do that. So these are some of my uh, efforts to get serious about composting. Um, like I said, I'm hoping to get some good usable compost, hopefully a couple of batches this season um, with the, uh, the new composter over there. Um, one other uh, trick of the trade that I've picked up that I'm starting to implement with my kitchen scraps is, well really with everything on compost, to try to chop it up as much as possible. You want to have it in as small of pieces as you can. And then also, if you like score the outside of an object, if it's a stick, um, branch, or if it's food scraps or whatever, score the outside of it with a, a blade of some sort, as well as chop it into small pieces. All that allows the microorganisms to get in there better and to break that stuff down faster. So those are uh, some good tricks of the trade. Um, you want to basically keep things mixed up if you're trying to accelerate the process. You want to keep it moist. It should be about as wet as a, a just wrung out sponge. That's kind of your ideal uh, moisture content in there. Went over to a buddy's a few weeks ago and he had, a, he had his compost and plastic bin. And the bin was just full of water. And basically it was like a, like a dirty sink. A sink full of dirty dishes is what it looked like. And, and it smelled putrid. It, was, you know, it smelled like, a, like an outhouse at Boy Scout camp one of the latrines there. So I dumped that water out for him. I went into some into the woods and scraped up some uh, some dried leaves and some twigs and dumped those in there just to add some more browns to try to help with the smell. Um, probably didn't get enough to actually take care of the problem but I at least you know gave him some pointers to point him in the right direction there. Um, so that's an example of having it too moist. Um, it can also get too dry and that slows down the the uh, composting process. So you want to try to have it at that that good happy medium and you want to try to keep the temperature in there high which you can do by keeping everything compact and although you don't want to press into it, you don't want to uh, press the air pockets out of it, you want to leave that air in there to, for the, the microorganisms. But you want to have it in a contained area um, where it can heat up and if you keep mixing it up It'll mix up like the, the stuff that's well along with the composting process and the stuff that's just beginning, and it'll help everything to kind of break down faster. So there's just, just some tricks of the trade that I've picked up, and uh, I'll be sure to have another update about my adventures in composting once I uh, produce some good usable hummus out of the out of the bin there. So check back in a few weeks for that. And if you uh, enjoyed this video, make sure to click the like button and please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. And until next time, see you around the trailer park homestead.